All right, so uh, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about Range Mapper, which is a set of uh, adaptable, um, interactive animations of uh, past ecosystem change uh, using pollen data from Neotoma. Um, so I'm going to, instead of starting with the PowerPoint, I'm go I decided to just show you the actual um, animation. Uh, so, um, range, so here's range mapper, uh, I'll just start it up. So range mapper, um, uses, uh, pollen data from Neotoma, uh, from North America, Europe, and Oceania, um, and, uh, I yeah, downloaded all that data from Neotoma using the R package, um, and, it uh, and then uh, temporally interpolated, cleaned it up a little bit, and then uploaded it using Cardo VL, um, which is uh, hosted by Cardo, um, a in a uh, software as a service company that lets uh, that provides data handling um, for big data sets and also a lot of visualization uh, tools. So, um, yeah. So I'm I'm just running through uh, each of the uh, animations, uh, but I also invite you to I'm going to post a, a list of uh, all of the taxa uh, right in the chat, um, and uh, feel free to type in the chat if there's any particular taxa or taxa combinations you want to see, because um, one of the coolest parts of uh, Range Mapper is that it you can pick whichever ta combinations of taxa that you like, unlike uh, previous uh, versions of uh, animations derived from Neotoma data, uh, like Pollen Viewer, at which uh, many of you had probably used. So um, one of the one of the things uh, that Range Mapper uh, also or that Range Mapper also integrates the ice sheet data um, from a couple different reconstructions, one for North America and one for Europe. Um, so, for example, if I wanted to switch it up to Beach and Hemlock and just uncheck those right there, um, and you can see uh, the colors of the different taxa, and then. You've also got the percent abundance, um, and these show the major patterns of uh, taxon change. Um, right there, you saw you can see the hemlock drop. I'll go back. Run through that in the northeast uh, and the Midwest, um, and then you also. Can, yeah, you also can see kind of the combination of the ice sheet data uh, and how different taxa um, either track really closely as that ice goes away um, or uh, wait a while and then you can see uh, the spread from uh, different population centers, for example. Um, we can also, if we want to uh, slow it down to check out changes in detail, uh, you can do that. You can also speed it up. Um, and yeah, we also have a set of videos if you don't have an internet connection and you want to show it all. Uh, And all of the workflows are available on uh, GitHub, uh, linked in the chat. Uh, and the one of the other really cool things here is that with those workflows, you can download whatever data you want from different time periods, um, different regions, and um, different types of data. And that allows you to that gives you a lot of power uh, in terms of creating visualizations that are either relevant to your teaching, that are relevant to your area of research, 
um, et cetera. And I also wanted to note that it's not all um, pollen. Uh, you, we, just as a demo, um, I created a visualization of presence absence data for mammals in the Midwest. So here you can see um, the empty circles are uh, sites that all of the sites, uh, the ones that haven't been passed through by the animation yet. And then they, you have the bigger circles, filled in circles for when the time period passes. And then afterwards, they're filled in. Um, so you can see where you have these presence absence uh, samples over time. Um, and this would, yeah, so this would be possible for any presence absence data. And then the, um, the proportional symbols is do, totally doable for anything that's percentage based. Um, so diatoms, et cetera. Uh, it can obviously get a little bit busy with a lot of, with like many of the taxa uh, on once, um, but then you can just uncheck one for a couple minutes and then go back. Um, so now I'm going to hop over to my PowerPoint. So the uh, so the paper is uh, proofs are done and the DOI is not quite active, but it will be in the next day or two. So here's the citation for Range Mapper, um, and about me, uh, I'm a PhD student uh, working with Jack Williams at the University of Wisconsin Madison in the geography department, um, and. Range Mapper is kind of really shows off this interest of mine, uh, kind of working at that intersection of paleoecology, big data, and interactive maps. Um, because with the abundance of tools, um, on uh, it becomes so much easier to um, use this data for education, for uh, and then also to do really cool things just for you to uh, visualize data you want to research. Um, and I'm really excited about the potential for all of that, um, especially with big open databases like Neotoma. Uh, and then uh, in terms of other research interests, I'm also interested in the intersections between climate change and ecosystems and uh, ecoclimatic sensitivity. Um, and to get a little bit more into this overall range mapper workflow, so download the Neotoma data um, through the Neotoma R package using the APIs, um, select different taxa, and then we temporally interpolated the pollen samples to 500 year bins um, and uh, only use sites that already had calibrated radiocarbon. Um, models and then we uploaded that data to the cardo servers um and cardo requires a requires an account in order to make new maps but not to use current maps and educators and people associated with universities students can all get a free account through cardo um but anybody can pull up a range mapper uh yeah, and then in terms of making the maps, uh, created a basic web directory um, and then have an HTML file and uh, JavaScript and uh, CSS to make the base maps, create the widgets and set the animation style. And then uh, started out with just one continent and then uh, integrated them all into one document and then when the map loads, um, downloads the data from Cardo, creates the layers, and adds them to the map. So you've seen this. Uh, one thing I didn't show you on there was the acknowledgments bar sidebar. Um, but just click that, the little info button to get there. You can use the drop down menu to get to different continents, um, time control, and interactive legend, as I described. And then we created the proportional symbol legend kind of uh, 
ad hoc on our own because there wasn't anything quite like what we wanted out there. Got a little neotoma. And then you can also zoom in, uh, zoom out, and change perspective either by uh, manipulating the map or these buttons. Uh, and then I, so all of the data was obtained from Neotoma um, and specifically the constituent databases, European pollen database, the Alpine pollen database, the North American pollen database, and the Indo-Pacific pollen database. Um, in terms of feedback, I uh, want to especially, or I especially appreciate uh, the beta testing by Thomas Webb, uh, as well as feedback by Williams Lab, Simon Goring, and the Neotoma Dev team, and then uh, the Neotoma All Hands meeting last time. Uh, here's a little, here, these are kind of the evolution of uh, range mapper over time. Um, and that's it. <laughs>